Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 21 online CFM game. It is week 17 of the 2021 season. Here in the Premier Madden League, we have worked weeks, months, to get to the point where we are at today, which is a situation that is not in our own control. Well, we didn't do a good enough job of setting ourselves up in week 17 to just win and get in. So what we are actually hoping for today is one, winning the game against the Minnesota Vikings. Two, we're going to need some outside help for us to make the playoffs. So all we can focus on today is defeating the Minnesota Vikings and then we'll see where the cards line up once we get out of the game. But yeah, you guys can see our stats throughout the season for all of our players. And the good news for us going against the Vikings today is the Vikings have clinched the number one seed in the NFC conference. So a lot of these superstar X factors that you guys see, they're not going to be on the field, which means that we will have a better chance of winning the game against some backups. Nonetheless, the Vikings, they were the one seed in the NFC for a reason. So this will be a battle. We are underway as the Detroit Lions try to fight. For their playoff lives just to squeak into the wild card berth in the nfc conference the vikings start off with irv smith jr underneath and notice the quarterback today kirk cousins the rookie jamie newman has been at the helm for the entire season but the veteran Cousins takes over in this regular season finale as they run the ball with Anthony Madison. Do not expect to see any Dalvin Cook. Don't expect any Justin Jefferson. Definitely no Adam Thielen. Kyle Rudolph, though? Yeah, he'll be on the field as he gets the catch there. And Kirk Cousins is engineering a pretty decent opening drive so far. But some pressure from the interior forces him to throw the ball away. Second down, bouncing off the hit. Eventually brought down. This is borderline field goal range here. Third down and long. Five wide. Kirk Cousins, what can he do? He wants it all. But he finds Jeff Okuda for the interception. That ball lofted in the air for what felt like forever. And Okuda. Kuda was able to make a play. No points on the board. A good stop for our defense so far as Matt Stafford play action. One storyline to watch in this game is that this could be the potential final game as a Detroit Lion for Matt Stafford. Swift makes the catch in the middle of the field. If we do not make the playoffs, there is no guarantee that Matt Stafford is back on the team next season. So could this be his Detroit Lions finale here in Detroit? Well, if it is, regardless, we need Stafford the ball out. He wants the ball out. He'll need to try to convert this third down an 8-5 wide for the veteran quarterback who is rolling and finally firing, finding Marvin Hall for the first down. But there is a flag. And if it's holding, which it is, that is pivotal. Negate the first down. Negate the big gain. Is now third down and 18 with 315 left in the first quarter. Stafford rolling the pocket. Going outside. Marvin Hall converts regardless. You cannot stop Marvin Hall. Outside. Wide open. It's DeAndre Swift. And he's going to take the Lions away downfield. How about an on fire 6 for 6 start. But DeAndre Swift is swallowed up for a loss at 3 as we pitch the ball outside. Ty Johnson. He'll score the touchdown Ty Johnson as a reserve running back man oh man does he seem to get the big play off more often than not if you just give Ty Johnson a couple of touches a game there's a good chance he breaks one off even for a touchdown if not a first down whatever it may be he is a true spark plug in this offense and if we make the playoffs that one two duo of uh, DeAndre Swift and Ty Johnson is going to be something to look at carry on Johnson he's pretty much been banished from the offense we don't really give him many touches if anything he's just like a glorified fullback for us that's about it whoa cousins that's a dangerous throw intended for the fullback highly contested second down okuda wow completely whiffs on the play jeff okuda what are you doing that's going to be a first down as Kirk cousins goes play action and he's going to sit wait and be very indecisive getting a gain out of two out of it all but it looked like he might have had more upfield as Irv Smith jukes out of bounds once again this borderline field goal range third down and six for Cousins underneath Irv Smith makes the catch but once again third down flag and it's gonna be holding so no first down 
third down and 16 instead. When we were faced with this situation, we were actually able to convert. Can the Vikings do the same? Easier said than done, man. Coverage across the board and absolutely nothing is open. Cousins tries to force it, but Will Harris continues to be a stud for this Lions defense. He forces the incompletion and the punt. And you can definitely tell the effect of going against the Vikings backups versus the Vikings starters. The way we were able to press everybody at the line so easily. So, you know, it's definitely having an effect on this game, but who cares? We're just here to win the game. It doesn't matter how we win the game as Jamal Agnew makes the catch after going in motion. Stafford still has not missed. And he's going to go 10 for 10. Marvin Hall survives the monster hit as DeAndre Swift up the middle. Hasn't got anything going in the rushing game so far as Stafford continues to throw dots. Kenny Galladay has gotten hot the last couple of weeks. Makes the catch. Next play, Stafford rolling the pocket. Once Galladay in the end zone. Oh, not both feet in bounds from Kenny G. The throw was decent. The catch, not so much. Stafford, he'll take off and lose the ball. It's on the ground and picked up by Harrison Smith, who is getting away from the pack. Here come the Minnesota Vikings trying to spoil the Lions' postseason dreams. Harrison Smith goes all the way after Stafford coughs up the football, having a perfect game until that missed the Kenny Galladay, and now it is completely turned upside down. Oh my goodness, everything was going right, and then one play, one play, one fumble, and here we are back at pretty much a blank slate as Taysom Hill nearly got blinked off the field right there as we have a new set of downs. Thankfully, no fumble, nothing like that as Matt Stafford. Oh my goodness, he's playing fearless tonight. He is showing no fear and pretty much a blank memory after that fumble as I don't think that was a fumble by DeAndre Swift, but we're actually going to go no huddle here. We actually got a couple of extra yards after that fumble occurred, and the O-lineman picked it up as Marvin Hall continues to be a big piece of this offense. Oh, my goodness. Kenny Galladay is a mega piece of this offense as we go shovel option once again, but... Just like last time, nowhere to go for DeAndre Swift. He loses two yards. This will be a screen pass for Swift who has to make a turning catch. And that's going to cost him a chance to turn up field. Stafford, though, still on fire. We'll need him to be a bit safe on this third down as he rolls the pocket. Looking, looking, buying all the time. Oh, my goodness. Matt Stafford is truly on fire. But his flame is being put out by Vitae. My goodness, Vitae, the second time he negates a third down. Oh, yeah, you got to go. You got to get benched after something like that. Third down and 22. Now we really need Stafford to be careful here because, oh, my, if you turn it over here, it could be costly. Thankfully, it's just going to be incomplete. We end up settling for three up and good by Tucker McCann with a minute 10 left in the first half. But there just seems to be multiple missed opportunities for us right now. And, you know, at some point... Even the Vikings backups can capitalize on it, though. You know, now that Vitae is out the game as Kirk Cousins misses the pass wide open, hopefully that spells good things for us as the Vikings try to go draw. Will Harris nearly lined up the kill shot. Instead, Madison breaks it off. He gets a gain of five, third down for Kirk Cousins. He'll go middle. He'll find Irv Smith, who chooks in the middle of the field and gets to the 43-yard line as the Vikings try to engineer at least a drive to get a field goal. They still have two timeouts in their back pocket. Oh, but Cousins! is intercepted by Will Harris who needs some blocks and nearly went for six. Nonetheless, immediate scoring position for the Lions offense. This could be a game-changing play as Marvin Hall makes yet another catch in this first half. Hall to the 27-yard line. Timeout by the Detroit Lions in the flats. It's the third string tight end making the catch and going out of bounds to stop the clock play action for Stafford he'll go in their knee to Galladay who won't even get the first down and get tackled in bounds so third down and one we really want to go for the first down but more importantly we have to go to the end zone here with the limited time as Stafford he'll look the pass he wants Galladay stumbling rolling one yard short with seven seconds
seconds left. Oh, this is a precarious situation. The Lions five wide. Stafford with the ball. Be careful. Just throws it to the fans in the stands and will settle for the field goal. An ultra aggressive move could just be going for the touchdown, right? We're one yard away. I think the analytics would always say go for the touchdown there. But given the way this game is played, the way we are playing defense against, you know, the Vikings reserves, I feel like... Any sort of points will help us control this game. We get ball to start the second half, and we could get a touchdown drive here that could truly put us in the driver's seat as Matt Stafford is truly putting on a show tonight. Hawkinson trying to climb high to make that catch. Cannot. Second down. Kenny Galladay is on fire as we look to set something up. Stafford connects with Tyron Johnson, but a flag one more time. But thankfully not holding on us. It's going to be a free first down instead of a third down and long, roughing the passer penalty. So that's definitely a killer for the Vikings. Games as Stafford continues to find the open holes in the zone defense. Stafford is truly dialed in for this one. This is exactly what we needed, as well as the connection to Kenny Galladay downfield to the 15-yard line, making the catch. Here's Taysom Hill in the game. He's got a great pocket all day. Finally fires to the Andre Swift. So slippery in the middle of the field, nearly getting the first down. Taysom Hill on the keeper up the middle. Hill's got a touchdown for the third straight game and he's trying to help the Lions make the postseason two-point conversion here to make it a full 14-point game Hill still in trying to go to an on-fire Galladay but cannot quite squeeze it in can't squeeze the orange on that occasion and we leave the door open for the Vikings a bit now what we want to do here we don't want to even give them a chance we want the Vikings to be like all right this game is a complete wash. We're playing backups. Don't even care about winning the game. That's what we want. But of course, the Minnesota Vikings being a division rival, they don't want to see the Detroit Lions in the playoffs. So even though they have a limited arsenal, they're going to do everything in their power to keep us out the postseason because everybody knows if this Detroit Lions squad makes it into the playoffs, they could be the true wild card. They can go all the way to the Super Bowl just like last season. Oh, and they can do it with great defense like here with Jeremiah Moon diving for the interception and scoring the touchdown. The rookie making a big play on a big stage. That was stupendous and that could be what truly deflates the Vikings in this matchup. Whew. Man, man, man. It feels like when things are going good for our Detroit Lions defensively, Jeremiah Moon is always making big plays. Whoa! Sketchy, sketchy run right there. Looked like an accidental taunt happened in the middle of it as that's going to be a catch, but Tracy Walker is all over it. Kirk Cousins on the read option. As you guys may remember, Kirk Cousins was the quarterback last season for the Vikings in the Week 17 matchup that knocked the Vikings out of the playoffs. That's what prompted him to draft the rookie quarterback in Newman. So Cousins trying to play for any team potentially down the road not exactly showcasing his skills here with three interceptions but he is leading a decent drive so far anthony madison gets away from moon all the way to the three yard line the vikings on the march and madison caps off the drive with an easy touchdown on the counter run and the vikings well, they're going to give themselves a chance in this one. They are not going to be here just to fold over and, you know, test some stuff out. They're going to try to win this game. They're going to try to ruin our season. So we got to keep our head on a swivel here and, you know, play this a bit safe. Play, you know, to win at this point. Not anything too crazy. Stafford, oh, showing some toughness there. But throws an interception to Mike Hughes. Stafford down on the ground. Hughes in the end zone. <laughs> it just got interesting. Our butts just got lit on fire to the highest degree. Stafford trying to improvise, but in an effort to hit DeAndre Swift in the flash, is pure miscommunication as that or Swift decided to run the middle of the field into the middle of the defender. Don't know why. Oh, Swift. Be careful, lad. He's not having a good time running the ball. As we go downfield, Marvin Hall with the catch. Hall with the Jets and the touchdown. The Lions with a great answer after it looked like they were falling apart one more time in the second half of a pivotal game. Instead, the PAT up and good to make it a 12-point game. Now, for those of you wondering, where is Amonara St. Brown? And why Marvin Hall is in the slot instead of St. Brown? Well, Amonra St. Brown is sitting this game out. Why? Not because he's injured, but because there is a rule in the CFM, in the P 
uh, premiere. Hold on a second, Will Harris. He's got the plunder, and he's got a lane. It's a pick six for Detroit, and the route could truly be on now. For Will Harris, he might have stamped his victory in Defensive Player of the Year. What a second half this man has had. He had one interception to his name entering that game against the San Francisco 49ers where, you know, everybody got interceptions, but Will Harris, he got a couple, and he's just been lit up since then, and no one can slow him down. Now Rayshon Jenkins making the interception. He'll try to go for six, but he's tackled by Irv Smith. Junior as we are late in the third quarter with DeAndre Swift outside trying to get the first down that'll be the final play of the third quarter as Stafford looking to pass open Hawkinson first catch of the day will it be a touchdown not quite one yard away Taysom Hill wide open Kenny Galladay the lead is extended the Detroit faithful on their feet hoping to see their team in the playoffs next week so back to the point I was trying to make about Amon Ross St. Brown before that onslaught began. So there is a rule in this uh, CFM where if your receiver slash even running back has a certain percentage of your team's receptions in the season, as Kirk Cousins, oh, that's an ugly miss right there. If your player has a certain percentage of the catches in the season, like let's say Amon Ross St. Brown has over 30% of our team's catches this season, then they get suspended. If you miss the playoffs, they get suspended for four games. If you get, if you make the playoffs, I think they get suspended for one game or something like that. Turnover on downs for the Vikings, that's really going to be the nail in the coffin. Kirk Cousins with a disgusting outing on what's likely to be his final game played, barring injury, in a Vikings uniform. But yeah, um, basically, long story short, Amon or St. Brown, he was a little bit over that 30% mark. It's you know Once you're at 30% or over, you uh, get your players suspended. I don't, know, I don't know why it's a rule. I don't know why it's like that. It's like something to balance people from like overusing somebody. But, you know, given our situation, the way our team was going, one, you know, we had a couple of dev games with Amon Rasane Brown early on. He was getting a lot of touches. And then the Kenny Galladay injury really, you know, made our offense flow to Galladay or um, Amon Rasane Brown as the number one guy. So um, that put us in danger of, you know, getting him suspended. So we actually had to sit him for this game. So the hope was to sit him, you know, hoping we're going against Vikings. Uh, backups that we can still win the game and then bring Amonra in for the playoffs. So it should be a gamble that ends up working out for us as Taysom Hill outside. He's, he's just, we're just messing around right now. But I do have some news for you guys. The game that we were depending on to make the playoffs, it's Eagles versus Giants. So, as DeAndre Swift fumbles for the road, like what, what are we doing, DeAndre? Come on, man. We're just literally trying to chew a clock and DeAndre Swift cannot help himself but fumble the ball. Like, he knows that he's not on my good side, and he still tests his luck anyways. But, uh, yeah, um, the game we need is Eagles versus Giants, and we need the Giants to win the game because if the Eagles win the game, we miss the playoffs. If the Giants win the game, we make the playoffs. It's as simple as that. Our whole season, not in our control, but it came down to one game as uh, Vikings nearly get a touchdown here. It's all formalities at this point. The Vikings score a touchdown. Doesn't matter. We're just going to need a ball, and the Vikings will definitely not fight it as they have their eye on the postseason. Already having the first round by in hand. Like, you know, they're looking ahead to what's going to happen in the divisional round of the playoffs. It's Kirk Cousins. He'll get the read option touchdown. So, uh, priority alert for the Eagles there. You might have caught that little clip right there. The Eagles are going to win that game against the Giants. So, that means that the Eagles are going to make the playoffs. Our uh, the Giants don't make the playoffs. Our Detroit Lions do not make the playoffs either. So, um, yeah, I mean, we put ourselves in this situation. As you guys see the uh, final score of the Eagles game down there, they end up with an 11-5 and record. But if the Eagles ended up with a 10-6 and record, we would have had the tiebreaker over them for the final wildcard spot. And, um, yeah, as well as the Giants. If the Giants won that game, they would have been 10-6 and as well. We would have had the, I believe, the conference tiebreaker over all of them. But, uh, yeah, we, we depended on tiebreakers and stuff like that. And ultimately, we missed the playoffs on a tiebreaker. The tiebreaker we missed the playoffs on, as you guys will see eventually, it was to the Chicago Bears. The Bears ended up getting the seventh seed in the NFC Conference. And they made the playoffs purely on head-to-head -head record against the Detroit Lions. 2-0. We won one of those games against the Bears, we would have been good. And that's why you have to take care of division opponents. And that's what nearly burnt us last season and what ultimately does get us this season. Even though we do get the win against the Minnesota Vikings here, 
Yeah, we just we didn't do a good enough job on, especially the first half of the season, covering ourselves up. We do end the season officially on a three-game winning streak, and with a ten and six record, which you think would be playoff worthy, especially with the seven seed now added into the NFL playoff picture. But ten and six just was not good enough. It was just barely not good enough. The Bears also finished ten and six, but you know they had the head-to-head -head record on us, so. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's all good, though. This is our first time missing the playoffs, which definitely hurts, but, you know, I, it's not like we can't have any excuses. Like, it's all on us, right? So, <laughs> what are you going to do, man? You just, you know, move on to next season. So, uh, I apologize for not being able to show you guys playoff football for the first time, but, like I said, you know, we, we just got to own it and uh, move on to next season. You know, right? That's what we got to do at this point. So, uh, at the end of this video, I'm just going to show you guys the awards, who won awards. You guys see who made the Pro Bowl. A couple of Detroit Lions made the Pro Bowl. Matt Stafford made the Pro Bowl for the second time in the CFM. Um, we had Frank Ragno make the Pro Bowl at the center position. I don't know if he was center one or center two, but he made it. And then... I believe Will Harris made the Pro Bowl. Deshaun Hand made the Pro Bowl for us. And yeah, I think that was it. There was four Detroit Lions in the Pro Bowl. There might have been five, but actually, yeah, Amonra St. Brown probably made the Pro Bowl. So uh, that would be five Detroit Lions in there. So you see Will Harris, 77 overall, but he didn't play like a 77 overall. I'll tell you that. So what you guys see here is the final playoff bracket. So you guys want to pause the video and see how the playoff bracket looked. Definitely go ahead. I, I should have waited like a couple of seconds of the video, but yeah, you can do that as an alternate. And you guys can see that the Buffalo Bills ended up winning the Super Bowl. So shout out to the Buffalo Bills. Congratulations to the Buffalo Bills. A monster game from Josh Allen. Got it done against the Washington football team. And now we're going to go through some awards. So that's how the whole playoff situation shook out. Um, I believe the Bills bounced the Patriots in the playoffs, the defending Super Bowl champions. Um, you guys saw uh, Minnesota was one and done. Washington ended up making a nice run in the playoffs. They ended up beating the Cowboys in the championship game, I believe. So, uh, yeah, you guys see uh, all these awards. We're going through AFC first, I believe, and then NFC. So, yeah, you guys can see um, this guy on the Texans, Hawkins. He won a lot of awards. He won MVP, running back, offensive player of the year, you name it, he got it. You can see some Buffalo Bills represented, some... Uh, touches on the Super Bowl championship. The Chargers had a great season. They have made it to the championship game and put up a heck of a game. I don't know if you guys saw the score of that game, but uh, yeah, apparently it was quite the wild outing. So now you guys see the NFC side. Will Harris ended up officially winning Defensive Player of the Year for us. So, so that was uh, definitely clutch. You see a Monra. Um, you know, a couple of hiccups, unfortunately, weren't able to get us the offensive rookie of the year there. And Jeremiah Moon nearly won defensive rookie of the year. So shout out to Jeremiah Moon, Stafford. Uh, he placed in that situation. But yeah, um, next time I see you guys, it will be for some season three off-season recap. So leave a like in this video if you guys enjoyed what you guys saw today. Subscribe for more Man 21 gameplays. One more note, Will Harris, by winning defensive player of the year, did go to Superstar. So that'll be a good uh, piece for us, as well as defensive back. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.